right guys <clears throat> so let's get started on part two of this t-shirt video um, for this video I'm just going to use one of uh, my old t-shirts that I just can't wear anymore it's shrunk up in all the wrong ways it's short where it should have been long and whatever else but here you go let's talk with this t-shirt for just a second now other uses for a t-shirt that I didn't mention before one is the towel it will dry you off it's pretty absorbent you can use it for uh, toilet papers a wash rag you can use it to hang your uh, hang your food up if you need to hang food up now uh, you can stuff it full of uh, of leaves or boughs whatever the softest uh, fodder is that's around you and then it's a pillow now if you spend a lot of time out in the woods you will appreciate that because sometimes a pillow can make the difference between a comfortable night and not um, so, all right there you go so that's closed up so now you got a foraging bag you can put whatever you forage in with handles open closed oh that good to go you can put whatever you wanted to in it all right and I you know I said before anything you could use for cotton anything you use for fabric the, the t-shirts covering it if you wanted the width of a schmog you can split this seam right here and split the seam right here and open it up and then you got that uh, larger piece of fabric that you want in the schmog now I'm going to show you how to make three different uh, Fish nets with this today. I'm going to use a sleeve for two, and I'm going to use uh, the body of the t-shirt for the third. I'm going to show you how easy they are, and then hopefully I'll go out and uh, and we'll see what we can catch with it today. Give me a second. I'll make sure I'm still recording, and then uh, I'll go on to the next step. All right. I'm going to start with the easiest one first. The first things we got to do is uh take the sleeves off that'll be the first step so i'm going to go ahead and get this cut off and uh and i'll be right back um one thing i forgot to mention if you were in a situation where cordage was was in demand and you needed cordage or even fish lines or anything like that you could take your time and split the seams on this and then you'd have that thread and that thread you twist a couple of those together and you got a, a viable fishing line uh, for smaller fish anyways I'm going to finish this up guys and I'll be back in just a few minutes alright guys so the first one and the easiest one uh We'll go ahead and get started on that. You're gonna need a Y stick about like this. Um, it doesn't really matter how long it is at first. You can play with it and trim it back off. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at it length there and there. I'm gonna trim off a third. I'm gonna put my length right there and right there. I'm gonna trim it off here and here. Now to do this, the smoother your limb is the better, so trim it up to the best of your ability. And that little fuzzy right there probably help out more than you think. You could even bring it to a point and then sort of uh, ping the point down to make it uh, so that it won't snag. I think right there, that's going to do it pretty good. All right, so now take the sleeve. Now, if you look at the sleeve, there's a seam right here. And that's going to be your hardest thing to work around. So we're going to get past that real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole right about here. And now you can choose to go half or you can go whole. It doesn't really matter. I'm just making and actually... Uh, the stick that you're using will kind of dictate how fast you got to cut it. All right, just like that. Now, what you're going to do is take these guys and sort of bend them together pretty close. 
ain't gonna work. Go ahead and push that one on a little bit. And take this side. All right, guys, so we gotta push down on the sleeve. You can see the frame of the net. The problem being, of course, there's a hole right through the middle. So you can sew this up any way you know how. I'm gonna show you a, a limited resource way to sew it up real quick. And uh, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this little stem right here. I'm gonna dress it up because I want it to be smooth. You see those little the curl shavings I'm pulling off of there? They're green right now. But if you sit those out in the sun, for about, I don't know. If you set them out a couple hours before you're gonna start your fire, they will take a ferrocium, look at that right there. They will take a ferro spark, like nothing you wouldn't believe. You just gotta let them dry out. It's in pretty good shape. I got a couple of spurs there. sharpen this up to the best of my ability I want it to be sharp no barbs on it this is green and I'm gonna be pushing it through I'm gonna be using it as a needle so I'm gonna take this I'm gonna heat it up I'm basically gonna just flame harden it you might not think this makes a difference but I promise you it does Going to stay way stronger and harder longer using this. Whew. That's good stuff. Alright, so what I'm going to do to close up this back end like this, I'm going to take that seam, I'm going to line it up. I'm going to pull this out straight just like that. I'm going to pop that through. Uh, make sure y'all can see it. I'm going to come over just a little bit. I'm going to pop it through again. I'm going to come over. Pop it through. Come on down. About right there. Pop it through. Alright guys, so there you go. You see it all sewn up just using that twig there. Now I have it spread out so you can see the sewing. And actually here, let me show you the inside. That's what it looks like on the inside. Uh... It's not a very big net, but if you, you fish along the shores and in the grass, I mean, you'll catch double finger bram, crawfish. I mean, I've caught little turtles with a net like this. There's all kinds of things. If it's in the grass and you come through it, I mean, you've got a, a chance of catching it. It's not a great net, but it's a cool net, it, and it works. It will uh, provide a source of food for you. Now, to finish this up, I like to gather mine up, and actually you'll see how that looks inside. It looks just about as good. And you can actually break these over on themselves. And you could actually sew them back in or however you want to. Basically, I just did that to lock it in. And probably what I'll do is I'll cut it off about right here and here. And I'll show you guys uh, later on. And actually, one thing that you could probably do is just take this, bend it over, and shove it back into one of your other sew holes to lock it in. Just like that and that'll help hold everything together you got a pretty good net uh, functional all right now so I'm gonna move on to the next net let me get ready for that and I'll be right back all right guys on this one's gonna be the same basic idea except for a Y you're gonna have an extended Y and you see that I've trimmed this one up because it was pretty thick and I didn't I, I needed to make it small enough for the t-shirt to fit on it um, that's uh, probably one of the biggest challenges that I've had with making these is picking a stick that was just too robust to, to fit through the already existing seams. So what I'm going to do is the same thing. 
except I'm going to make instead of two cuts this time I want to make three right there on the seam I'm going to come in about an inch and make that cut I'm going to take that cut and I'm going to run it out to about right there it's about where I want it to be and then I'll cut here okay I'm going to take this in, I'm going to start sliding it over. Alright, so we got that on. Good to go, just like that. And that, that we're in good shape. Now what I'm going to do is pull this back up some. To give me some slack to work with. And I'm going to bend it over to that point right there. Alright guys, so you got this work down pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one down as far as I can get it down. And stretch it out. This is by far the most tedious part of building any one of these nets. Now you'll see that this side right here is definitely shorter than this side. And this side's gathered up over here. So what we're going to do is start pulling this side up. Keep pulling it and pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. Oops. That guy's going to stay down. All right, keep pulling it and pulling it around, pulling it around, get it centered up just the way you like it, opening up the mouth the way you want it, okay? So now that I have that set up, I think right there's a pretty good width. There we go. That's pretty well in there. I'm just going to finish it off with a square knot. If you were worried about this coming untied, you could burn the ends and they'll lock down like glue and you won't have to worry about it anymore. You'll have a hard time untying it ever though. Alright, so there you go. And you use the same sewing technique, whatever sewing technique you were going to use on this guy. You can use the limb, you could use paracord or a piece of paracord, one of the inner strands, bank line, fishing line. Whatever you want to sew it up with, you can sew it up. And you'd have a have a pretty good net going. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Alright guys, I'm going to get set up for the big one. And I'll be back in just a second. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you the big one. And uh, you'll need a more robust limb because these things do not process water well. It's a slow drain, unless, of course, you don't close the gaps up uh, terribly tight. Um, but I'll get to that in just a little while. But the basis is that you're going to make a frame for this shirt to sit inside of. <clears throat> and that is going to be your net. Now, for this, considering the size, uh, you'd probably want to do some serious lashing, so I'm going to get set up for that. Alright. Again, I'm not going to use a uh, clove hitch for this. I'm not going to use an overhand knot either. I'm just going to pop this over with a double half. I really like using this method. I'm going to bring this over to where I want it. I'm gonna pop one string on one side, one string on the other, just like so. I'm gonna bring it in and set. But that's in there. That ain't coming in there. It ain't happening. All right. So there we go. We got our frame set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit the t-shirt in, just like this, just like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew it on. And the way that I'm going to do that, I'll be right back and I'll show you in just a second, okay? Alright guys, by far the number one best way to do this would be to use a piece of cordage and do a whip stitch. And make sure your whip stitch actually wraps around the, the bar itself. The stuff that I'm showing you now, I'm going to show you if you had, you know, minimal resources, didn't want to use cordage. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just taking these little twigs here and I'm popping them through 
as if uh, as if they were buttons. I'm just using my little awl to get me a hole started. Just like so. Use my awl. Poke it through. Use my awl. And poke it through again. Now you could use this awl with your cordage, just like I'm using these little twigs too. And I can guarantee it'll definitely be more efficient. My uh, awl, you see how it's going through there real easy. I spent a little bit of time with that awl and set it up uh, so it, it's actually sharp enough to, to really work with leather. Actually, another thing that will add strength to this, and I did not do it on this, the afterthought, stuff that you remember from the past, but if you incorporate that seam, the double fabric, in the sewing portion, it will be significantly stronger. <clears throat> Alright guys, you can see here, I got it all sewed in. This is on there pretty tight. All I did, and actually on this one I used a running stitch. It's the same limb all the way through. But on these guys I used little spots. And underneath here, I would say this is the most important stitch is right here to lock it around the V. And all you do there is take the two leftover ends and just and basically use a button out of the stem. Now, so now you got a good looking net. You just have to close off these holes. Now you can use any of the sewing techniques as I mentioned before. Sewing thread, fishing line, paracord, bank line. You can use twigs like I've shown you. You can use wire if you carry wire. Uh, one really important part of thought on this is are you fishing for larger fish or smaller animals and the difference would be on how tight you sew this the looser you sew it the better it actually works as a net because the water actually drains out of it faster so guys i really hope you've enjoyed this uh little video on t-shirts and the multiple uses for it i'm going to take uh one of these little guys i'm going to go down to the creek and i'm going to see what we can catch and um i'll be back with that just in a little while uh, before i do that i want to say thank you for watching this video please click like share and subscribe all right guys i'm going to show you how i'd use this little net um, you could use it for sight fishing if you actually saw something small enough to grab with it But what I would do is more blind fish and uh, if you'll notice here I flipped it inside outwards That way that my sewing will not get snagged on anything while I'm trying to use it So let's see how I do see if we get anything at all if I don't that's okay But I'll give you an idea of how I would use it Not really looking for something to catch but blind fishing with it Now you see the what I told you about the draining of it, it drains slow. There's no, ooh, look at that, crawfish. That's a plus right there. Dump that out. See what we got, there he is, a little crawfish. Now that don't look like much, but uh, I mean, if nothing else is bait, and uh, I would say that it's definitely higher on the food chain than say uh, a grasshopper worm or a grub. Let's try a couple of more and see what we can find. <clears throat> Get anything that time? Oops, there's something moving. What is that? What is that guy? Oh, look at that. That is a teeny weeny, itsy bitsy crawfish. Little baby. Ooh, look at that. We got that too. Look at that guy. It's a little minnow of some type. I could not begin to guess what it is. Anyways, there you go. Try the spot one more time. It's paid off pretty good so far. I think I saw something flip out right now. I was pulling it up that time. I 
don't know if there's anything in there or not. Flip it over and take a look. Let's see. Oh, what is that? Oh, another little crawfish. That's just a few minutes, man. You might uh, get a nice little boiling pot going if you gave it a little while. Oh, look at that. What is that? Oh, you know what that is? Let me see if I can rinse it off. Not losing it. That, I believe, is a dragonfly larva. Anyways, all right, let's try something else. You know, here's some pretty good spots. Nothing in that, that was too shallow. Let's try that deep hole right there. Oh, look right there on the side. Is that a dragonfly larva? A water scorpion? I don't know. It's another one of those, uh, I'm not thinking of a dragonfly larva. Well, let's try a couple more times. <clears throat> Doesn't seem to be anything in that one. And that's all right. see anything in there. I mean there's nothing there, it just means I don't see anything in there. Alright, there's a deep deep hole right here. I'm gonna say deep deep, relatively deep. I'm gonna get down in there pretty good. See what we get. Big old fat sack of nothing. Oh, look at that. That's decent. Look at that guy. That's sizable. That's a little snack. A little crawfish. That's worth throwing in the pot. Put my own crawfish back on home. <laughs> 